pray for you. You're praising the Lord. That's that's a testimony in itself man, that uh that your doctor is feel is, is feeling he's seeing some progress in your situation. And we know the prayers of the righteous availeth much. And so we continue to pray for one another. We continue to lift up one another up. Uh, we hear the testimonies of, of what God can do, uh, what he's done for others, he can do for you. And so we continue to uh, uh, connect with one another. I'm, I'm always blessed by the testimony, by the prayer requests, um, by the prayers um, that take place. And I know God has a rich blessing in store for each and every one of us. We're uh, going back to the book of Acts tonight. Tonight, we are looking at Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19. And we are going to begin with verse number 17. Acts chapter 19. And we are going to begin with verse number 17. If you recall, uh, on, on Sabbath, we spoke about the situation where uh, God's spirit was so strong with, uh, with his people, particularly Paul, um, so much so that, that he, the, the, the uh, apron that he was using for work or, or the handkerchief that he used to, to wipe the sweat off his brow. He, 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 people would take that to different individuals who believed in the divine power and they were healed as a result. And God was doing these amazing things, uh, uh, so much so that people were trying to copy the amazing things that God was doing. I mean, they're, they're trying to copy this, the, these awesome and miraculous things, but without the power uh, that comes from God. And so we, we, we heard the situation earlier in chapter 19, where um, seven sons of a priest uh, uh, by the name of Siva, they were trying to cast out demons in the name of Paul and, and in the name of Jesus. And, and, and the demons spoke through this man. And, and he, they said, Paul, we know. Jesus, we know. But who are you? And, and they beat them so bad. They, they left them naked. Um, and they, they, they escaped, luckily, with their lives. Because God is a gracious God, He's caring and and, and He's He's always wanting to save somebody. And hopefully, through that whooping, they got saved. Uh, but but at, after that, our, this is where our text picks up. Verse number seventeen says, "And this became known to all the residents of Ephesus, both Jews and Greeks." And fear fell upon them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was extolled, meaning lifted up or esteemed highly. Also, many of those who were now believers came confessing and divulging their practices. And a number of those who had practiced magic arts brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all. And they counted the value of them and found it came to 50,000 pieces of silver. Verse number 20. So the word of the Lord continued to increase and prevail mightily. We're gonna use the title tonight, Selling the Farm for Jesus selling the farm for Jesus. I don't know if you've ever gone through a situation where uh, maybe you were trying to make a change in your life. Maybe uh, you were trying to get a new job or, or you wanted to change your career or maybe you just wanted your health to become better. Uh, so perhaps uh, once you, you realize you needed to change your diet 
or you wanted to, to change your, your lifestyle, you, you, you picked up some new exercise equipment or, or, or maybe you decided that you were going to, to, to change your diet so you're gonna stop eating all of the different things that you, you were gonna eat before. Uh, some some people when they change their diet and maybe this is you so I'm not talking specifically about you, but uh, some people when they change their diet or they hear new light about a, a diet they'll, they'll go to the refrigerator and, and look and see all the food that they have in there and you're like oh I don't know I don't know <laughs> well maybe I need to eat up all this food first and then I'll start then I'll start my diet. Uh, maybe I, I, I need to, to first do something else and then I'll get to doing what, what I need to do. Maybe, maybe, you know, I paid too much money for that or, or I made too big of a sacrifice for the other thing. And, and so th this becomes a, a, a barrier to, to doing it because what really happens, what ends up happening is by the time you finish eating all, all the food in that refrigerator, then you say, well, did I really want to do that new diet? <laughs> I, I'm kind of okay where I am. <laughs> this seems to be what, what what's going on in our text, only we're talking about spiritual, more of a spiritual situation where people have seen the living God. They have seen him in action. And now they have a choice of what to do. Because when we see God's God in action, when we God's spirit is, 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 is in us, then we have a choice of how we are going to uh, uh, respond to the spirit. In our text today, uh, God has just shown himself mightily. He has just done some miracles that no one else could duplicate. He has just done this, this amazing and, and awesome thing. And, and, and people all around heard about this particular miracle. People from far and wide were, had heard about just what Jesus was doing in this, in this area. They said it must be God. It can't just be nothing because no one is able to do what God is doing. And so they, they noticed this and, 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 and verse, uh, verse uh, 17 says, and the name of God was, was blazed mightily as a result of this. See, even when bad stuff happens, God can be praised. I mean, even the demons in our story they are testifying to the might of God. They say, we know Jesus. We know who he is. And, and, and because in, in this situation, even though these boys are whipped, God is, God is, is, is lifted up high and he is being uh, glorified in the midst of this. And now everybody is, is, is believing. Verse 18 talks about now believers, they came, believers. Notice it said now the believers come confessing and divulging their practices. Now, now we would think that, uh, you know, people who did not believe, you know, we would think, oh, wow, it, it must be something new light going on here that, that, that uh, people are, are now believing, the, believing Jesus for the first time. But no, this says believers. This is people who already um, have confessed God. But what it seems like what was going on is they had a little bit of a syncretism going on. And syncretism simply means that you're doing two things at the same time at the same speed. So, so you got one foot into your old practices and you got new, uh, the other foot into the things that God wants you to do. So, so you're trying to do two things at the same time. That, so so what, what they were doing is they, they were enjoying this new knowledge of Jesus. They had learned, they had heard about Jesus in the past, but somehow they had figured out a way to add their magic add their, their, all of these spells and stuff that they went through, they had found a way to mix that with Jesus. They have found a way to mix these two paths together. They, they, they have found a way to, to say, well, I can worship God and I can worship this other thing. And, and, and I wonder if that happens with us. If, we, if when we give our lives to God, we still are, have one foot in the world. One foot still enjoying the culture of the world. One foot still enjoying the, the privilege of the world. One foot still aiming after the things that the world is aiming after. Still wanting power, still wanting to be uh, wealthy, still wanting prestige of the world, still wanting people to, to look at us and say, oh man, you're doing a good job, you're successful. I wonder if we still have those two things in us 
Because if we do have those two things, at some point, one is going to break. You remember Jesus said when he was talking about, he was talking specifically about money, but he says, no man can serve two masters. He's going to love one and hate the other or, or hate one and love the other, but you can't love both. And so at some point we're going to have to choose. And when we choose most likely because we have not sold the farm for Jesus, uh, the, the, the likelihood is for us to, to go back to the thing that we've already always liked the thing that we're so most comfortable with, the thing that gives us most control, that's the thing we're going to go to. And that is the way that Satan would have for us to go. But we see in our text today, they, they, they see this new light and they're like, hold on, something's not right. We have been not uh, receiving all the power. We've, we've been worshiping God. We've been, we've been serving God, but some power loss was there and the power loss is there because we have uh, these practices that are not right. Because sometimes when God, when God shows up, shines a light on you, on your situation, man, that, that day, first of all, that day's a bad day. <laughs> I'm just here to tell you, because when you look at yourself and when God searches your heart and reveals something in you, that's not right, it's a hard day because we're so used to, to, to uh, loving and being comfortable with the different situations in our lives. But when God reveals something to you, the best thing we can do is to say, yes, God, I surrender those things. I surrender whatever it is that's not like you, even if it's something that seems like it's a good thing to me, even if it's something that the world says is a good thing, it's an attribute to your life. God is asking you, give that up to me because then I can really glorify myself through you even stronger. I can give you more peace. I can give you more joy as a result of you giving up those things. They gave up their practices. And notice what they did. They didn't just give them up. They didn't just say, okay, we're done with him. Let, 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 let us, uh, uh, let, we have to do something with these books, they, they realized. Something has to happen. These very uh, valuable books, as we see, uh, they had a choice to make. They could have said, well, you know what we need to do? We need to sell these things. We need to sell them because we can make some money for the church. We can, we, we, we can, we can fund, that, fund our ministry. Evangelism can go to the next level. And it would have sounded like a brilliant idea. Well, see, this is the thing, people of God. When, when God's people are, are surrendered to God, they're not so wrapped up in materialism. They are only want the will of God to be done. That, 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 that whole mentality is a lot like Judas's mentality. You remember Judas's mentality? When, 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 the, when the woman with, with, with the oil came and anointed Jesus, she said, what are you doing? We could have sold that and, 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 and done so much with that. Because the way of Christ in so many ways is, is completely opposite of what uh, the world is telling us it is. The way of Christ is, is completely separate from what the world is itself. And so they knew there was no other way but to get rid of these things. We can't sell them and make the money because first of all, uh, the, the, the people who were giving them to, we're, we're advertising about, we're, we're advertising this thing. We can put them into temptation. We can allow them to go into some foolishness as a result of us, but we, oh, well, oh, we have the money, so it doesn't matter. Cash rules everything around me. But instead, or the other way they could have done it, say, well, let's just keep those things around. You know, let's just, We'll just put those on the shelf. The good reading material is good history going on. But but God's people don't want to don't want to play around with, with with stuff. See, one of the worst things we can do is um, is play around with stuff. One of the things they do um, in Alcoholics Anonymous is um, a, per, a person who is you know who, who has a, an addiction to alcohol. Um, will they, they will tell that person to do a couple of things. One of the things they will tell them is do not go back around your old friends. Do not go back to your old crowd. Get rid of everything in your life that reminds you or makes you feel like you want to go back to, to drinking. And, 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 and there's a similar course when we come to Christ. 
our old life is should be gone. Our old life should be over. We should they should be buried in the sea of forgetfulness, and we should be going forward in the newness of life. Knowing that God has all the funds and everything in the world anyway, this money shouldn't mean anything to us, just the simple uh, comeuppance of money. We see in, in our text that it was it was 50,000 pieces of silver when they counted. It, it, it's something I, I, I kind of marveled at the fact that they even counted because I, I would have just said, no, let's just let's just burn it. Let's not count. Let's not count because that's, that's going to make it. That's going to be a temptation for me if we count it. Because if we count it, I'm I'm, I'm gonna be thinking again about selling it. <laughs> but but somebody counted it, and it was fifty thousand pieces of silver. But notice the last the last part of this text, and we're gonna get out of here. The last the last verse in our text says, "So the word of the Lord continued to increase and prevail mightily." Apparently, there were people looking on and says, "What is going on?" <laughs> Y'all are crazy. Y'all are, are, are burning books that are worth all of this money. What kind of person would do this? What would possess somebody to do this? I want to know something about what's going on in your life that would make you put the culture aside, put financial gain aside, and, 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 and want to, to do all of that for this cause. What is the cause? What is in you that's causing you to look different? What is in you that, that's causing you to act different? And, and that's what God wants, wants from us. When, when we do things and when we live for Christ, when Christ is living in us, people should be looking at us and saying, man, what in you is, is, is causing you to live different? What in you is causing you to speak differently? What in you is causing you to, 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 to live in a different manner? Something is different about you. I have to know what it is. You, you're loving people who hate you. How is that possible? You, 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 you're, you're forgiving people on a strong level. You, you, you're, you're not, you're not uh, self-centered and, and worried first about yourself. You're uh, worried about everybody else first. And, and you're loving people even, even in, their, in, their, in their crazy situations. What is going on? What is it about you? That's what God desires to, to draw people through us. And, and as we see in here, even this text, through God's spirit, through the power of the spirit of God, God is now drawing more and more individuals unto him. And so the question is asked, the question we'll ask as we get out of here is, have you sold the farm for Christ? Have you given everything on the altar of sacrifice to God? Or have we held different things back? Have we said, no, that's too valuable to get rid of? Have we said, this is too, I, I appreciate this thing too much to, to, to part with it? God's Holy Spirit is speaking to somebody's heart right now and, and saying, hey, this thing in your life is not like me and I need you to be rid of it because it stands between you and me. Won't you give it up? Won't you surrender totally and completely to the Lord Jesus Christ? I guarantee you in space of whatever you're holding on to, he will give you peace and joy that's limitless. He'll give you power and you will see an amazing thing through you that God is able to do because of our surrender and our total focus on him. Father God, thank you so much for loving us so much that you give your life for us. And not only did you give your life for us, you, you, you now came back to life for us and now you, you're forever interceding for us and one day soon you're gonna come back for us. Oh, what great love that is for us. Calling us your children. Father, because of what you have done for us, because of the awesome blessings that you bestow upon us daily, may we give our lives totally over to you. May we not hold anything back, give you everything so that you can use us in ways that you've never used us before. May we not be double-minded May we not be going in two directions at the same time. May we not uh, try to please the world and please you. May our only desire be to do whatever you call us to do. 
May our only prayer be to be filled with your spirit so that you can live in us. So that like this Acts church, we will see the fruit of your, of your presence in our community. Thank you so much once again for using us and loving us. In Jesus' name, amen.